I do like, yeah, in this episode, I do like the, the death of the sun <laughs> because it's understated to say the least. And as I said in the, in the chat, actually, it's, it's always difficult to, it's been depicted so many times. It's nice to find new ways of depicting dramatic events that everybody's seen. And to, to put it very far away and just almost, it's nothing of consequence. I thought it was a really nice idea. The other thing that in the series, the, um, the challenge is that there's always a challenge with the Big Bang, trying to depict the Big Bang, because it's always tempting but wrong to depict it as some kind of explosion. And actually in the film where we depict the Big Bang, there's no sound at all, so it's really quiet, just a quiet little thing. <laughs> so it's, not, it's the opposite of the Big Bang, and I was very pleased with that. And the, finally, uh, Black Holes, the Black Holes film, is, um, again, it's always a challenge. Everybody knows what they look like from Interstellar. And actually, Interstellar used um, a program that was developed with Kit Thorne and uh, the company DNEC. So it's, it's actually a, a simulation, it's not a graphical rendering in Interstellar. So it's, it's literally general relativity coded into the graphics somewhere. So it's hard to compete with, uh, with Interstellar. But then, so that was that was a challenge, but I think it was, I'm really pleased with the like of this one. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, if you go to the Black Holes film, um, during the development of the series, the, what's known as the Black Hole Information Paradox, I, I, I think was solved. And the, the paradox was, what happens to information that goes into a black hole? Is it destroyed or hidden from the universe forever? Or does it come back out again in the Hawking radiation from the black hole? And it, I, the answer seems to be it comes out in the Hawking radiation. But that was a really a discovery, I would say, that to most people's satisfaction was made in 2019. So it's a during development. And, and I'm really interested in that. Um, but that, that, so that's in the film. So what I talk about in the film is the 2019-2020 view of what happens to things that fall into black holes. The, the answer is they come out, or the, the information that was contained in them most likely ends up enc encoded in the Hawking radiation when the black hole is completely evaporated away. But the process by which that happens is um, mind-blowing and not fully understood. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the space probes are quite central, um, which was, again, it comes, we, we started doing that in the planets, actually, the, the mission was central to the films, because it's, it's just a, it's, in some sense you don't notice, but in other, it's a recognition of the fact that all the things we're talking about were, are understood because of those missions, and without those missions we wouldn't have the story. So, so yeah, the spacecraft play a central role in all of them. And obviously, in the cosmology program, it's been like a couple that are central. Um, black hole is more difficult because there isn't really well the 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 the, the mission is the ground based mission. Right? It's the Event Horizon Telescope that that really got the image of the black hole or LIGO gravitational wave detectors. So, um, but we use one of the we use Chandra which is the X-ray telescope, which has played a big role in looking at the environment around that. It was completely by accident, which is probably the best way to do it. Um, you know, I, I was working at CERN on LHC before it was um, commissioned um, on some of the detectors that I was working on. I was running a project build those things. And then the press, you know, the BBC and others just kept coming to serve because everybody was interested in LHC at the time. So I just started doing um, doing uh, interviews and talking about LHC. And so it came from being a working scientist. At that point I was a, a, an RA, actually a research associate. Um, I think a lecture, I may have just become a lecturer. But that was, that was, you know, so, so it was completely random. And uh, I think that's the way to do it, actually. I, I always, 
there are different views on this, but I do think that I always, if people ask me for advice, I always say, get your PhD. That's, I think, I think that's a time when you learn uh, how to do science, because you have to, because you, you learn, you do new research, you generate new knowledge, and you find out how difficult that process is, but how rewarding that process is. So I, I, I always think if you can, and you're interested in your university, do you really, you're really enjoying your science. I, I think PhD is a wonderful thing just because you learn how to do research. I, for me, it's about um, just explaining it in the way that I understand it. Um, and actually, most of the time, that I find doing science is spent with me trying to understand something. <laughs> you know, that's what science is. And I think once you've gone through that process, then the only thing you can do is vocalise the way that you understood it. And I do think that if you understand something deeply, then it's it's not it's not so hard to do. I think the hard bit is actually understanding it yourself. So that's my advice because you can kid yourself now you can do it in theoretical physics because there's maths involved so you can hide your understanding completely or your lack of understanding you can hide it by just being able to do the maths and i find that all the best physicists um, that i really respect are people who actually thought through for themselves the the problem and you can tell when when the moment you ask someone about something tell whether they actually understand it themselves. So the trick is to actually understand what you're talking about. <laughs> you, know, you know, and that can take ages. And, that, and I, you know, the things that I've done to go to your field, the, the things, the bits of biology that I talk about, that I, I talk to my colleagues at Manchester and say, you know, photosynthesis, for example. I just ask them, how, you know, and, and I keep going until I understand roughly how it works. And as you'll know, there's a different levels of understanding in photosynthesis because it's tremendously difficult and not fully understood really. But you know, I, I, I take my time until I'm convinced that I understand it. I mean, I think the the not so. I mean, the the, the challenge on this one was sometimes having to quarantine. You know, in Iceland, for example, they had to quarantine for six days, I think, when we got there. So you just have a film crew all in these rooms in a quarantine hotel, just who are not allowed to speak to each other, but you can speak to each other on Zoom or something. So we just sit in our rooms and have parties, Zoom parties, basically, because there's nothing else you could do. So it was kind of unusual, because usually we, we're all together and we're going out to dinner and things like that, but you couldn't do that. And in Dubai as well, we had some time we had to spend in the hotel. So, so yeah, it was kind of a different, you see each other at the airport and then you're in a bubble and you have to wait in your rooms and then, so it was a different way of filming, I think. But then once you're released into the wild in Iceland, then you're a bubble. So then we were with each other all the time and nobody else could come into the bubble. So that, that was a different way of filming as well. So there's no interaction with anybody else. And we did actually film in some quite remote places, particularly in Iceland. We, we, we tried to stay away, you know, because you don't, you, you, once you're all, um, once, you, once nobody's got COVID and you've all been bubbled and isolated, you don't want anyone to come near you. You just want your little team to work. So that was the difference on this one.